Hello and welcome to the Calculator Guide video on the bisection method for iteration using Spreadsheet on a Casio FXCG50. We're going to be using Spreadsheet in this video. I'm using the Casio FXCG50 here, but you can use any calculator that has the Spreadsheet facility, including a Casio FX991EX. Slightly different location for the features, but it operates in a very similar way. Let's take a look at the question. We've got the equation x cubed minus x minus two equals zero has a root alpha between one and two. Starting with the interval one, two, use interval bisection to find an interval of width 0.0625, that's one sixteenth, which contains alpha. And we're going to be tracking this as well as the calculator by using the graph as well just to take a look at how that appears visually so let's start off by entering spreadsheet mode so that's option four here option eight on the class whiz if you're following along with that now we're just going to populate here columns a and b and what we're going to start off with is putting the starting values in cells A1 and A2. So in this case, it's one and two, just coincidentally. We are going to be writing figures in to cells three, four, five, and six, uh, but we will just leave that for the moment as that's part of the process. We're also going to be putting a formula into the spaces in column B. So navigate back up to cell B1, and to be able to fill a formula in, it's edit, F2 and then we want F6 for the next menu and then F1 for fill you can see we've got the fill formula page if you're doing this on the Casio FX991EX or equivalent it's going to be option and then one fill formula and you ought to be in a similar screen you'll already have the equals prepared for you if you're on that model here on the CG50, you can populate it with constant values, but we're going to input a formula. So the first thing that we want to put into the formula section here is an equal sign, just to let the calculator know we're filling in a formula. So it's shift and decimal point to give us an equals. Now what we're going to do is we're going to copy out the function that we have here but instead of writing X in, what we're going to do is we're going to write the location of the first cell that had our first value in. So our first value is going to be one. And if you remember that is in cell A1. So where we've got X, we're gonna reference cell A1 here. I'm gonna use the alpha button to help us out. Alpha A1 cubed in place of X cubed minus A1 minus two and then just press execute to confirm that so that it is the function in place now as a formula but referencing values from the cells from column a going forward and then the cell range well let's just have a little think about how many cells we're going to need now we've got two initial values taking up the first two rows and then well we want an interval width of 0.0625 what happens in the bisection method is that we're splitting the difference between the two values of the interval in half down the middle each time. So at the moment we have a gap, an interval between the two values of one. So the difference between one and two, our two starting values, we're gonna split that in half, that would give us 0.5. And then on the second iteration, we would split that in half again, which would give us a quarter, 0.25. And then the third would be an eighth, 0.125. And then the fourth, the fourth iteration would give us a 16th, which is 0.0625. So this is a different way of telling us that we need to do four iterations. So let's think how many cells we're going to need, how many rows. Well, we've got our two initial values, and then we want four more rows for our four iterations. So we need up to row six. So it's going to be B1 to B6. We need to populate with this formula. You can, of course, do this second after you've done 
your sort of bisection values if you want to but I find it's quite nice to put it in first so that they automatically populate I think that works quite well so B1 to B6 press execute and execute again to confirm now you can see that we've got the formula filled in here we've got a value of negative 2 for x equals 1 and a value of 4 for x equals 2 ignore the subsequent negative 2's there that we've got they are going to change as we put more values in um, but at the moment that's just as if we've got 0 in there so 0 cubed minus 0 minus 2 of course that's going to be minus 2 but we'll just ignore those for the moment Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of things that we need to check. Well, firstly, that is confirmation that we have a root between 1 and 2, because 1, we have uh, a value that is less than 0, a negative value, negative 2. And we have, when we have x equals 2, we have a value that's positive, above 0, so 4. So there's definitely a, a root between there, because there is a change of sign between those two x values, or uh, the result that we get with those two x values. And it's that that we'll be looking for as we go through the process. Now, let's just double check with the graph what's going on there. Uh, well, you can see that here that the uh, red curve is the graph of the function. And then we've got two straight lines here that represent the initial two values, one and two. And we're looking at the interval between them, so the space between them. You can see the root is located there. And you can also see that it's the values of negative 2 and 4 that are given on there. So what we need to do now is to split that interval, that gap between 1 and 2, in half down the middle. And then see which side of that split the root lies. Now what we're going to do, we're going to do this in the next cell in column A. So that is cell A3. Now halfway between... 1 and 2 you may already know that's going to be 1.5 so feel free to put 1.5 in I'm going to show you a fuller method of how to do that just so we can follow that through with the other other iterations so what we're doing is we're adding the two values together what we'll be doing is actually adding the most recent value that gives us a positive result and the most recent value that gives us a negative result each time with each different iteration but that will become clear as we go along so what I'm going to do is open up a set of brackets parentheses and I'm just going to input here adding the two values together 1 plus 2 that's the values of x close the brackets and then we're going to split that in two so it's divide by 2 to give us our bisection press execute and you can see now that we've got 1.5 it as a value in the a column there that's our value of x and then the value that is from the function which is in uh, column b is negative 0.125 so a negative value let's just take a look at that on the graph so you can perhaps see now that we've got a line split down the middle there that is the bisector at 1.5 and you can see that the curve actually is in the interval between 1.5 and 2. Now how can we tell that just from the calculator if we didn't have the graph produced? Well what we can tell is that 1.5 has produced a negative value, negative 0.125, and 2 is the most recent positive value, 4. So 1.5 is definitely going to be a little bit smaller, a little bit below where the root is, and 2 is above. So we know the root lies in that interval. So it's those two values that we're going to be going forward with. It's going to be 1.5 and 2. And we can perhaps tell, because we've got the graph here, we can perhaps tell, well, that's a little bit closer to 1.5. And that's revealed with the value there, negative 0.125, being much closer to 0 than 4. But we want to keep the process going. So we're going to now do the second iteration. Uh, so we're going to be taking the most recent value that gave us a negative result which is 1.5 and the most recent value with a positive result so that's 2 and we're going to be adding them together and splitting the difference to get our bisection so that's 1.5 in a set of brackets here plus 2 close brackets and then divide by 2 that is 1.75 again you may already have worked that out yourself and you can just put 1.75 in there rather than the formula if you want to and you can see that that has given us a positive result this time. So what that means is that the root 
of our original function must lie between the interval 1.5 and 1.75. And we can see here on the graph that it does. And so they are going to be the two values that we're going to go forward to the third iteration. So let's give that a go. So again, it's cell A5 this time, open brackets, 1.5 plus 1.75. Close brackets divided by 2, we've got 1.625, that's given us a value of 0 0.666, and you can see again from the graph that the root of the function lies in the interval there between 1.5 and 1.625 there. So 1.5 was the most recent result that was negative, minus 0 0.125, and the most recent positive result, 0 0.666 there. So. We're into the final iteration now. So this is gonna be the fourth iteration and we'll, we'll be able to tell then that the interval is 0.0625 wide. At this point at the moment, it's 0.125. So we need to go one more iteration. I'm also gonna take this opportunity then just to show you how you can use the grab feature so that we can actually take the uh, values from the cells this time now. It might be easier in this case to type them out, but let's say you'd gone many iterations down and you had some really long numbers. It might be easier just to grab it. I'll show you the feature anyway. So it's open brackets and then we want F1 for grab. And navigate up to the first value we want to use. Let's use our 1.625. That's given us our most recent positive result plus the most recent negative result was from 1.5 so we need to go and grab that so it's f1 grab and then 1.5 so that's cell a3 close the brackets and divide by 2 giving us our bisector and here we have a result then 1.5625 is the x value 0 0.2521 is a result from the function and you can see also from the graph there that the root lies between the interval 1.5 and 1.5625. And if you think about the difference between the value 1.5 and 1.5625, that is 0.625. So that is the width that we were aiming for. So we can say as a conclusion, the answer to our question is that the interval that the root is going to lie between alpha is 1.5 and 1.5625. Now just at the end what I'm going to show you is a way that you can just double check a more accurate version of your root just to check you haven't accidentally inputted the wrong formula. In fact I'd almost recommend it might be worth doing this first just so you know what your root is roughly going to be and what you're aiming for. So you can do this afterwards as a check or first as a target if you like. We're going to find a more accurate result for our root and we're going to use the equation solver to do this. Now bear in mind this wouldn't get you any marks for the question. This is just a form of affirmation if you like uh, and hopefully gives us a bit more confidence when we're going for this inner answer. So it's from the menu, it is equation and we're going to select F2 for polynomial. And we've got the highest degree here is what well, x cubed, so it's going to be degree 3. And let's fill in the coefficients. We've got one lot of x cubed, we've got 0x squared, we've got minus 1, negative 1 lot of x, and then we have negative 2 as a constant on the end there. And then press execute to confirm. And you can see here that a more accurate decimal approximation there, 1.5213797. So that falls between the, the interval that we've stated there, doesn't it? 1.5 and 1.5625. So we can be pretty confident that we've got the right interval for our answer there. There we go, how we can use a spreadsheet to help us answer a bisection method iteration question on the Casio FX CG50 or others that have the spreadsheet facility. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos. But that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.